Welcome everyone to Tech Tuesday. Kevin Hunter with Harry Brailsford here. And Harry, we're going to talk about PPP for MSPs today. Explain what this is. You've been writing a two-part series about this. We're going to be covering a, a second part here coming up soon. But talk about PPE at, or PPP rather and how important this is to an existing client base for our MSP followers out there. Absolutely. So just uh, to, to first, let's set the table. Um, a, a managed service provider, MSP, is the computer guy or gal that goes around to the law firm and takes care of the printers and the laptops. Just to level set, I know we've talked about it in the past, but I, I never know who's listening in. So we got to we got to start with that baseline. Then the PPP is a play on words. So I got a little chippy um, and, and, and have a little bit of fun with my writing. So obviously most of us know the payroll protection program, okay, known as the PPP. Um, I took that acronym and came up with the uh, uh, portfolio protection program, and I'll get to that in a minute. But the idea is um, managed services providers uh, in all likelihood took advantage of the payroll protection program in the spring of 2020. Those funds are starting to run out right call it july call it august and and thank goodness they were there for many of the people that that i associate with they they needed it and so now you need to develop a new line of work and i think you've said it best and maybe you want to say it but with existing clients how can you find a, a new services and lines of work you can provide to them to protect your business model mm -hmm. <laughs> Historically, it's always been true that if a business really thinks about their current uh, client base, that they can grow the business by as much as 30% by just doing a very focused job of harvesting more opportunity out of those current clients. Now, obviously, right now we have a little bit more uh, challenging time with everything that's going on in the marketplace, but that focus couldn't do anything but help your organization, in my opinion, right now. Yep. So I'll go another layer deeper now that, now that we've established that. So selling into your existing client base in any industry is, is, is great. And, and quite frankly, I adhere to that and it's an easier sale. Um, so in my industry, you have extended warranties. Now I'll welcome your opinion about other industries. Um, but in, in my industry of technology, it's called third party maintenance. And so a law firm, let's take a good size Seattle law firm has a data center, even to this day, even to this day, they, they, and, and they certainly have routers and security apparatus and so on. And when you buy that uh, hardware, um, let's say, you know, the existing warranty and, and maybe the extended warranty, you're covered for one to three years, right? It just depends. Um, Kevin, you and I get that all the time when we go to Amazon, and I buy the camera you recommend, and for $60, do I want a five-year warranty, right? Right. For whatever reason, in my industry, we're coming up on a refresh cycle. So that would suggest one to two to three, maybe more years ago in our industry, that law firm did a hardware refresh of their data center. And we're coming full circle to where those extended warranties and the maintenance plans are expiring. So there is an industry out there, third-party maintenance, where they will sell you yet another extended warranty, if that makes sense. And, and maybe to help the listeners, if you want to draw out the same analogy from your niche over in the automobile industry, please do, because I, I, I want to make sure we're really clear. The biggest thing that when people think about the uh, context or the idea of extended warranty, the biggest thing is doing your homework and making sure who's providing that warranty is actually giving you a product that's worth the paper that it's printed on. And so the if you're already doing business with somebody that you know and trust, and this is a product or service, you know that, that this an, an existing MSP provider is, is already working with a given um, base of clients. You, always, you already have that trust relationship there. My advice to the MSPs would simply be, don't offer a product that you can't stand behind um, that's the biggest thing because where where extended warranties or coverages like this of any kind have ever gotten their their gotten a bad rap has been simply that the provider of the uh, additional coverage 
um, didn't stand behind the coverages they claimed they were going to do. So that's that's really the only thing. Um, if it's a good program, they're offering a good, you know, extended warranty to, you know, borrow that phrase. Uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And it can be an, an excellent form of additional insurance for the protections they're trying to accomplish. Yeah, let me let, let me grab that. So I, I called it the Portfolio Protection Program, and I talked about uh, Joe, the computer guy, and Sally, the computer lady, having a new source of um, income by providing these extended warranties, third-party maintenance. So let, let's just keep it simple. Let's say the insurance policy is $100 and the MSP makes $1. Okay, and, and, and so that's $1 that they didn't have yesterday. So that's that's good. And it's a it, it's largely transactional, the, the, the entire arrangement. However, uh, in talking with some experts, you're also doing the right thing by your client. We're protecting um, their hardware portfolio. So it's it, this, this cute little term PPP can be used yet another way. The downtown Seattle law firm, and you know the big one, you know, three, 400 lawyers, probably 400 staff, the, the big ones, they're going to be very interested in extending the life of their hardware base uh, anytime, but especially with some of the economic challenges we have now. So, Kevin, there's a chance for, for myself, the MSP, to do right by the downtown Seattle law firm and get a few more miles out of that jalopy to use your uh, <laughs> car industry <Sure. laughs> analogy. And, and and again, I see the ads on TV from your industry, right? I, I, I get it. And, and, and this exists in the technology space. So that's the, the, the basic idea is that this is low hanging fruit for the MSP to look at again and provide these services um, to their existing client base. Kevin, it, it could also be a sales call to a new client because what if uh, there's a large accounting firm in downtown Seattle where the MSP has um, forgotten, would be a nice way to put it, but forgotten to offer this service. That creates a window of opportunity for me to go in and have a talk with the accounting firm and say, no, no, we, we do not need to refresh the data center for the next two years. That No, no, no. And, you know, accounting firms, Kevin, they're going to place that, they're going to capitalize it, they're going to depreciate it, but there's still a real cost to mm -hmm. acquiring assets. Even though you can play the game yep. and recover the cost over five years, there's still cash outlay. So that's what this first part is, is really about, is just to heighten the awareness in the technology community that um, I'll, I'll, end, I'll end my high level thoughts on this, is that this is almost a counter cyclical opportunity um, in, in my eyes right here, right now, that everybody's looking how to save cost and extend the life of their assets. And, and that's what third party maintenance does. Mm -hmm. Case closed. <laughs> uh, agreed. And every indication is, is that consumers at all levels are looking what their current investments are in anything they've got, whether it be computer hardware or a car or a home or whatever and looking at ways that they can get the most out of that current investment and um, you know, playing it a little bit safe because nobody for sure knows what the road ahead holds right now. There's, there's a ton of market uncertainty. We've just endured a very, very difficult economic time in this uh, country already leading up to now. So even if everything was perfect from here forward, a lot of people are, you know, have a, a very keen eye on recovery. Uh, and so, the the whole thing is going to be around how do I play things a little bit close to vest and anything that helps organizations do that they're of course going to be interested in it so well there we go well thank you again uh, you know we've just crossed over two years of working together headed into our third year so thanks for uh, letting me weave the technology conversation into the business community thank you very much. Thanks, everyone, for joining us here on Tech Tuesday. Kevin Hunter and Harry Railsford. Next week, we'll be back on part two covering third-party maintenance. Take care, everyone.